Will a rich, good-looking billionaire let go of his ego to accept that he's fallen for a call girl? Hey guys, welcome back to Flix Recap. My name is Luke Pelletier, and today we're covering Pretty Woman, the 1990 classic rom-com. This movie is perfect to snuggle in and watch with your partner. The storyline keeps progressing and keeps you invested. But before we start, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to Flix Recap if you enjoy the commentary. And as a disclaimer, this video contains my own personal analysis and comments. It's not a substitute to watching the film itself. Links to purchase the film are in the description below. Now, let's get started. The protagonist, Edward, gets off the phone with his girlfriend and realizes how she's upset over him not giving her time and how she talks more to his secretary than he does with her. Now, Edward, being the nice guy that he is, acknowledges her sentiments and rushes as fast as he can to her place in Beverly Hills, even if it means borrowing a friend's car in a hurry to fix things up. The scene cuts to a call girl, Vivian, in sensual attire and sneaking out of her apartment to not get caught by her landlord. Turns out she was looking for her drunk roommate, Kit, who's used up all their rent money for her substance habit. After finding Kit, both of the girls go out looking for rich men who are looking for some action. At the same time, Edward stops on the sidewalk near them while trying to figure out how to get to his girlfriend's place. Of course, the expensive car gets both the girls' attention. Vivian takes her shot since she's trying to earn back their rent money that her roommate had recklessly spent. Vivian gets clever with Edward and has him pay her to chaperone him and show him the way. Now, Edward is so rich that he doesn't even have to know how to drive. Vivian gets frustrated at how pathetic he's trying to drive the car that she offers for them to switch and have her drive. While on their way, Vivian is still trying to get Edward to avail her for her full services. Seeing that Edward probably has a pretty fat wallet, she lies about her rate being $100 an hour. Edward can't believe it and comments on it being pretty stiff. So, in a bout of wit, Vivian leans over, grabs his third leg and replies, no, but it's got potential. This no doubt gets Edward riled up and decides to ditch his girlfriend and tell Vivian that they can head to his place instead. Being that Vivian has had to hustle all her life, this is her first time inside a hotel and she gets instantly mesmerized by the aesthetics of the place. Inside Edward's penthouse, Vivian is trying to speed through things, but Edward wants to get to know her better. This actually reminds me a lot of Moulin Rouge. He sees she's bothered by all the talk and niceties and wants to get down to business, so he books her for the entire night, accepting her raised pay of $300. As the night goes on, Edward is simply watching Vivian have champagne and strawberries, laughing and watching a movie. To bookend the night, they finally do the deed, and she falls asleep. Edward wakes up again to work and notices Vivian's real self for the first time, without her blonde wig. She has beautiful red curly hair spreading over the pillow. Now, I don't remember if they make note of this in the movie, but there's a good reason that she'd wear a blonde wig. Redheads, beautiful as they are now, had some stigma against them in the 1990s, attracting all kinds of crazy and other trouble. In the morning, Vivian and Edward continue to bond. He makes her stay and orders every breakfast item for her from the menu. Even though God's not around, Vivian knows she's in heaven. Vivian's quirky and bubbly attitude piques Edward's interest, and he agrees to pay her to stay with him till he's in town. The next day, Vivian decides to spend her riches and heads to Rodeo Drive for a shopping spree. But things don't go as she expected. The salesgirl at one of the shops she enters bullies her and refuses to serve her since they think she doesn't fit the type of people they choose to cater to. Vivian feels humiliated and leaves. To make her day worse, she realizes she's forgotten her keys to Edward's room, so she decides to go to the front desk to help her out, but again she's rejected because she can't provide any proof that they both live there. Thankfully, the manager has a kind heart and understands her situation once she breaks down into tears. He's even kind enough to make some calls for her. Vivian gets herself together and enjoys a fine time shopping for a cocktail dress ready to rock for dinner that night. After her shopping spree, she asks the hotel manager to teach her the proper etiquette you should have when dining at a fancy restaurant. Now, sweet as this is, you gotta wonder, is Vivian jumping through hoops here to truly impress Edward? Or because she wants to continue making bank on the grind? When Edward arrives, he's stunned by how beautiful Vivian looks. 
What's even more surprising is that he takes her to a business dinner with potential clientele, not caring about whether she ends up embarrassing him by doing something stupid. Alright, if you've made it this far, you're kicking back and enjoying the video. Now would be a great time to subscribe to Flix Recap. Subscribing is absolutely free and it helps me bring you even more dope content. Okay, plug over. Back to the recap. The meeting doesn't go as planned because the opposing company is pretty stubborn and Edward confides in Vivian later at the hotel. Come to think of it, their jobs are pretty similar. As Edward states, they both screw people for money without any emotional involvement. She offers her body and he screws people by breaking companies into smaller pieces and then selling them individually for much higher rates. Needing some alone time and not wanting to answer Vivian's personal questions, Edward leaves. Vivian, wanting to make things right, follows him downstairs and finds him playing the piano, something out of a Jane Austen novel. Seeing Vivian watching him from behind, Edward stops playing and orders the people gathered around him to leave. Surprised by Edward's control, Vivian melts into his arms as he opens her robe. And, uh, I'll let you fill in the blanks as to what happens next. The next morning, Edward asks Vivian to go shopping again, but to his surprise, she isn't too excited this time. Vivian shares her experience at one of the shops she went to, which makes Edward furious and decides to accompany her this time. At the shop, she makes it clear to the sales ladies that Vivian is with him and that she should be treated with the utmost respect. Edward leaves for work while Vivian transforms into an elegant looking pretty woman that shops till she drops. She doesn't forget to visit the sales girl from yesterday that humiliated her and makes sure to stop by at her shop to throw some sass. Meanwhile, Edward is starting to grow a conscience on the nature of his job. When he arrives home, Vivian welcomes him, wearing the tie she bought for him. Seeing her beautiful skin, they both end up in the bathtub. Finally, Edward opens up to her about his past, which obviously makes their bond closer. The next day, Edward takes Vivian to a pony race, and all the single ladies are super jealous. One even has the audacity to call her the flavor of the month to her face. Vivian's response is even sassier. I'm not trying to land him, I'm just using him to get mine. Which, even though it's just reactionary, again makes me wonder if this is just a ploy. Watching Edward's changed behavior concerns his lawyer, Philip. Philip is quick to assume that Vivian is on assignment to spy on Edward for his rivals. Now, Edward is obviously smitten and defends Vivian. But this doesn't stop Philip and quickly messes things up. He goes up and asks Vivian about her profession and then asks her for a night out. She agrees, but it's evident that she's hurt and humiliated. At this point, there's still three days left for Vivian and Edward's agreement, but Vivian is feeling so humiliated that she doesn't want it to go on. Back at the hotel, Edward and Vivian get into an argument. During the heat of the moment, Edward puts her down even more by reminding her of what her profession actually is, which just stings her to her core. She leaves and doesn't take any of Edward's money. Very gangster move by Vivian. Seeing the untouched money on the table, Edward follows Vivian and apologizes. He finally puts his ego aside and admits he got jealous watching her talk to the manager of the rival company. Vivian senses Edward's sincerity in his apologies and hears him out and heads back to his suite with him. The next morning, Edward makes Philip shut up when Philip mentions him dating a hooker again. At night, Vivian is looking ravishing in a red dress as Edward takes her for a surprise. He makes her wear a ruby necklace worth a quarter of a million dollars that he's taken out on loan. However, in the scene, something about the emphasis put on the necklace and the way she touches it foreshadows something bad is about to happen. Edward gives off some Christian Grey vibes when he takes Vivian on a plane to San Francisco for their date. Vivian blooms Edward's heart by enjoying the opera and starts to enjoy the things that Edward is interested in. For the first time in years, he decides to take the day off, as per Vivian's request. This time, for a change, they both spend the day according to how Vivian used to live, going for a romantic picnic, eating corn dogs, and all that. Back at the hotel, watching Edward sleep makes Vivian realize she's falling for him. She can't help herself from kissing him on the lips. He wakes up, smiles, and again, they enjoy each other's embrace. As they lay in bed, drifting asleep, she confesses her love to him. Unlike most men would probably feel in that situation, Edward isn't really ready to fully accept his feelings, and he doesn't offer her a reply. 
It's Vivian's last day with Edward, and he cares enough for her to leave her a condo, endless supplies of money, and the free will to shop. But is this really what she wants? Of course, she's unsatisfied and opens up to him again, but he gets distracted by a work call and isn't ready for such a big step. At Edward's meeting with the company that he originally wanted to break off and dismantle, he gets a change of heart and ends up helping the employees instead. It's evident that Vivian has changed him into a better man by heart who now wants to help people. Edward's lawyer, Philip, is a money-crazed being that doesn't like the new Edward that he saw at the meeting. He decides to follow Edward back to the hotel but finds Vivian alone. He still only sees Vivian on the surface, only considering what she does for a living, and starts acting like a total ass um, bully. She tries to get him off of her, but he slaps her so hard she falls off the sofa. Thankfully, Edward being the hero that he is comes in time to save her and gives Philip exactly what he deserves and kicks him out. Edward feels really bad and tries his best to make Vivian feel better. He asks her what she exactly wants again but is unable to give in to being her fairy tale love. She's already packed and leaves after getting her $3,000. Watching her leave breaks Edward's heart but he's in a tough bind. He asks her to stay the night but she refuses and they say goodbye to each other. Back at her apartment with Kit, Vivian tells her that she's planning to move to San Francisco and start a new life and continue her education. Right before she's about to leave though, Edward finally gets the cojones to commit and goes after Vivian. Once he gets to her place, despite his fear of heights, he climbs up the outer stairs to her apartment balcony, like a prince climbing to save Rapunzel. And we can all assume that they live happily ever after. Now, Beautiful a story as it may be, you take it all with a grain of salt. I mean seriously, who in 2021 could buy somebody else a condo that they've only known for a few weeks and then decide to respectfully bow out of that person's life? I feel like that's not chivalrous, that's actually just poor money management. But I don't know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed the commentary, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time.